Now, brassicas for whitetail and for deer hunting plots, a brassica planting could be the perfect planting that's out there. That's the most widely used. Now, there's some out there that are just vehemently against brassica because they haven't found that the deer hit it in their area. And I'm here to say and, and uh, happy to report that that only applies to five, maybe 10% of the entire north half of the country where a deer won't hit brassica. We'll just discuss why really quick. Um, typically where I find brassica, the deer numbers are low, probably lower than they should be. Um, high percentage ag areas where there's a lot of food and often they have not been planted effectively with complementary food sources that establish a pattern of use early. And then there's sometimes they're not mixed well or even included in a mix at all. So you're just planting single brassica varieties. And often I see a combination of all four of those things taking place in order for deer not to hit brassica. They do hit them. Um, they hit them in most areas. In most areas they don't, that can be improved on. And why do you want to plant brassicas in the first place? You know, why do brassicas, radish, rape, turnip, there's kale, canola, there's other varieties out there that you can plant, but those are the three common ones. And we'll talk about mixes. But first off, one of the reasons it's great to plant brassica is generally deer leave them alone uh, until the middle of the season or late season, but you can achieve up to five to six tons of growth in a good brassica planting in the right conditions in about 10 weeks. So very, very fast. Uh, clover, you might be more in that two to three tons per acre, and that takes place in April, May, June, July, August, September, till the first frost hits. So a lot of months to get a smaller amount of volume. And that's why, and that's the same case with a lot of cool season annuals, where you're planting a crop that grows quickly and gives you a lot of volume in a short period of time. And it's the same with summer volumes and summer annuals. If you're planting a summer annual, you're gonna get a lot more um, bang for your buck and a lot more growth than you will with a perennial. Um, planted in that same area. So that's why summer annuals, cool season annuals, it's really hard to compete with um, in terms of volume and just that over amount of draw for hunting season or for summer growing season, depending on what you're looking for. So five to six tons per acre. Think about that in a very short period of time. Now, in order to achieve that, one of the things you have to do, of course, weed control is paramount, making sure you have the right pH levels and then the right fertilization levels, not fertilizer first, then lime, but lime first, then, then fertilizer but you have to decrease the amount of summer deer pressure. I do see brassica crops fail often because they're too small and they're planted next to summer food sources. There's a lot of summer deer food or summer deer on a property. And for that, as soon as that little green you know, plant grows in an area where there's not a lot of other green vegetation, then the deer hit it quickly. And we can jump down to right here, the big myth, number six. The big myth is that um, brassica needs frost to make it sweeter and more palatable to deer. Folks, I'm here to tell you that's a target that includes about a nine month window. I've seen brassicas rotting in the spring after a, a solid Michigan winter because a lot of those functions that I talked about in the first four times were, you know, the, uh, there's too few deer in the area, it's an ag area, there's lots of food, it wasn't planted right, it wasn't mixed well, whatever the reason, but I've seen it rot and I've also I first planted brassicas, I believe, would have been May of 99, and by July it was eaten down to the dirt. And this was in the area where the deer weren't even used to food plots. They didn't even have food plots. That was my first food plot on that property in the UP of Michigan. No ag within 20 miles, other food, and that was part of the problem. Anything green grows up, no frost, no freeze. In fact, it was still a couple months away from freeze before, when it died, maybe three months away. And so when people talk about it needs frost to hit, that's just something that sounds good on paper. It caught probably 15 years ago and people have been saying it, but it's not actually true or accurate unless you're referring to the midpoint between May and the following April where deer might begin munching on it. That might be accurate then in that frost date of October 15th, whatever it is in your area, it might be that middle time, that average window, but that average window is many months long and there's so many other factors at play than if the frost hits it. If the frost does make it sweeter, if it does make it more palatable, that might be 2% of it, but that's about it. It's not really a, a huge thing. If you think about it, deer are really shifting their patterns of food about the time, uh, about that time the brassica is mature. 
that's into October. A lot of local habitats dying, crops are getting picked, and all of a sudden there's brassica there. You get a first frost at the same time, deer hit it, and people think, oh, it happened at the first frost. There's about 10, 15 other things that happen too. Reducing the summer deer pressure. You have to make sure that if you're planting brassica and it's smaller crops that you don't have a lot of deer, a lot of summer deer, because as soon as it's green, if you have deer pressures, I've seen summer deer pressure eat corn stalks down to a foot high just before they even have any ear on them because there's way too many deer in a certain location. If you plant brassica in those locations, say in August 1st, um, which is a common planting date for brassicas around August, late August, more mid-August in southern Indiana, Ohio, um, southern Illinois, southern Michigan, southern Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, that'd be more like early 10th of August, and then when you get up north, more like August 1st. So that's about the window every single season. You need to command the fall use and the fall timing. And what I mean by that is really take control of making sure that the deer are eating it when you need them to eat it. The timing and use that I see is the typical area where you're doing it right and it fits the deer herd. Deer will start eating it, should eating it at the end of October. You don't want this crop waiting. The reason I say that is because it produces a lot of volume. If they start hitting it in October, likely there's still remnants and enough forage to go around all the way through January just with a couple acres because there's so much tonnage available on a well-planted, weed-free, no doe pressure, brassica food plot that allows it to reach a lot of volume. So really take control of that. That window of use, number four, that you really want those deer to hit it. You want to recognize it, that you want them to hit it at the end of October. That's that perfect timing. So that window of use, if you find the deer are not hitting your brassicas till the end of November, December, or later, make sure that you're actually adding 50 pounds of peas, 25 pounds of beans. You can add either or both. And because those are so luscious and deer are eating those in September, it's pretty natural for them to hit those in the same plot and step out over to the brassica and hit them a lot earlier. Another thing within that window of use is to make sure you plant them alongside another food plot. So what I'm doing typically beans and peas, early planted oats, rye around Labor Day. I'm planting another food source next to the brassica so that it establishes a pattern of use early whether that's end of August, middle of August, early September, pretty natural for the deer when they're already in that location just to step over and start hitting the brassica. Where a lot of people fail is they stick that brassica plot off to the side and say, okay, this is going to be a winter plot. Well, folks, if the deer have not hit that winter plot in August, September, October, November, why do you expect them to all of a sudden change your entire fall habitat and then go over and hit that brassica plot in December? It's not going to happen. So really, if they're hitting it too late, Make sure it's planted alongside something early and that you add the peas and the beans. Again, going back to why would you even want to do that? Five to six tons per acre, folks. Really a lot of volume that you can add. And once those deer start hitting it, it's hard to keep them off it. And the smell of that brassica, and especially when you get in December and January, get some warm days, the deer can smell it for a mile and a half, two miles away. It'll keep them coming and pull them in. There's hardly anything better than a really if they're hitting the, the plots, they've been already hitting those plots early for him to hit that brassica. And, and, and again, if they don't hit the brassica in your area and you can't get them to hit it, that's unfortunate because it is such a quality, high volume food plot with a lot of nutrition, very digestible for them to hit. I like planting around here early August. That's the planting for Southeast Wisconsin here. And about four to five weeks later, when I'm entering that middle growth period of brassica, I like adding 75 pounds of urea per acre. I do that with an approaching rain, and you wanna make sure you do that when the leaves are not wet. When the leaves are wet and you put that urea on, it can burn the leaves out and, and diminish growth. So you wanna take full advantage of a, of a forecasted rain. If that urea, which is 46% nitrogen, 4600, um, if that urea sits on the ground in the sun and bakes and it's hot, it'll volatize. And that means it just drifts into the air, doesn't go into the plant, not, it can't be taken up by the plant. And so you can waste 50% of your urea in a week with it being very hot weather. So, but the urea, what I like about that is you're, you're adding that nitrogen boost. Brassica is a nitrogen hog. You're adding it at that time when your initial fertilization efforts are starting to dwindle when it comes to the nitrogen. You're putting it in that middle growth uh, phase. And it's, it's crazy. I have some brassica that in the past, it's, I have some pictures that, you know, it's four to six inches high at week four 
and then at week six after that urea application is 12 to 15 inches tall and it just looks like a different different food plot but that can be a big explosion at at that time again the big myth maybe deer do hit it on average when the first frost hits but to me in my experience that's that window between july and the following march april that middle frost period is right in the middle of that that date so yeah i guess you could say that's like saying you took out the the head pin in a bowling tournament didn't hit anything else but you hit you hit the average because it was right in the middle even though you didn't hit anything else but it's a wide encompassing range and so you can kind of forget about that first frost date cheap and easy brassica per acre uh, we use northwoods whitetail it's a sweet feast brassica blend and it's uh, fairly cheap per acre i want to say john will get mad at me but it's probably 70 75 dollars per acre maybe 80 dollars somewhere around there it's a good price um, for a product that produces so much tonnage. It's amazing how those little seeds turn into such a giant plant um, within just 10 weeks. Uh, grow really fast, easy to plant. Many of my brassica plantings have taken place where we had to travel a long distance. We sprayed the ground three times, early June, or early May, mid-June, end of July, just simply threw it on the ground and we had beautiful, big brassica plantings because it sits on that ground, it germinates fast, it takes root fast. As long as you've taken care of the weeds and you don't have that deer pressure, it'll grow fast and put on a lot of volume. Extremely easy to plant. You can do it with very minimal equipment, just even a backpack sprayer to eliminate weeds, just throw it on the soil, and there you go. Complimentary seeds. Back in the late 90s, I first tried it with clover. I'm not sure if anyone else was doing it at that time, but it was a great way to establish my clover. I was taught you spray the ground, get it open going into the fall, and then you frost seed clover in the spring. And I looked at it like it's a huge sin just to have an open field of soil going into the fall. So I thought, well, I'll add that to the Braska blend. I checked with Jim Islub, the county extension agent up in the UP. He said, yeah, that should work. And boy, did it ever. The Braska would die out or get eaten down to the ground during the fall and then winter, and I was left with pure clover in the spring great way to establish it and so I started doing that in the late 90s and it's easy something that you can do very easy that's a great complementary seed clover that you can add to it you can also mix beans and peas into it you have to drill those or cover them up um, they work great in the buckwheat no-till uh, method that I do the ultimate no-till blend easy to plant brassica if you want to add if you want to sweeten the brassica side you can easily add beans and peas to it and get that to grow great complementary seeds no grain mix number nine what does not mix well and run and again i talk about a lot of seed blends that you see online if you see oats rye wheat mixed with rape turnip radish not a good mix the reason why brassica needs to be planted in most areas early august if you're if you're planting early august you should be planting your grains about four weeks to five weeks later so there's a four to five week difference of, of uh, window of planting between a brassica blend or a brassica crop and a cereal grain blend. The reason that's important is a cereal grain blend will outcompete the brassica, the brassica will outcompete the rye. They fight each other. They fight each other for nutrients. All of them are uh, nitrogen hogs. And so it stunts both, especially the brassica blend. And you need to be very wary of any mixes that include them at the same time because they're drastically different windows of planting. They're not gonna help you you need to plant those separate. There's a lot of times I'll overseed rye in Nebraska later in the season, especially September, late September, if I see that brassica has been overbrowsed or it's gotten droughted out, didn't grow well. You can always add two to 300 pounds of winter rye depending on if it's early September or late September. Later, you plant more, but you just broadcast it right over the top. It'll salvage the plot, salvage your brassica uh, plot, and you can have a, have a good, really good mix going for it. One of the things that I didn't mention right here, with brassica you have to stick so if it's six pounds per acre stick to six pounds per acre now sometimes in the ultimate no-till i'll add another pound in that case just another 15 percent 10 percent because i want to make sure that anything's covered up by the buckwheat there's another seed next to it that'll take off and you're still hitting that mark just a little bit extra but you're better off this is a six pound mix you're better off putting four pounds that's good then you are putting eight pounds out or nine pounds out because 
just like bluegills in a pond. If you stick too many together, they're going to be stunted. It's the same with, way with brassica. You have to plant in the right window. There's so many times I go to a spring food plot and I'm on a client property and there's little brassicas that are only three inches high, two inches high. They almost look like they're still alive. It's because they planted them Labor Day. They planted them five weeks late, six weeks late. Always think about that brassica might grow eight inches, six inches in the first month, and then it might grow up to 15 inches the second and third month. And what's cool about that is you can get giant volume towards the back end. The bad thing is, is that if you plant about five weeks late, you're missing about 15 to 20 inches of growth on the back end. And so you're going to have a very small, low volume crop. So you need to plant with the right timing, especially with rain in the forecast. It doesn't need a lot of rain, but it just needs appreciable rain. And finally, number 10, try to find quality mixes of brassica. It's important to add mixes. You want five or six different varieties in there for flavor, for different maturity timing, different volumes. Brassicas mix well. Dwarf Essex Rape, you want to make sure that it's a very limited amount if it's in the seed blend at all. A half pound per acre, three quarters of a pound per acre. It only takes five pounds per acre of Dwarf Essex Rape to cover that whole acre. I mean, really not much seed. It's very cheap. You can get five pounds of Dwarf Essex Rape if you're a big supplier or dealer. You can get it for less than a dollar a pound. So when you're buying something at $75, $80 a pound and it has a high percentage of Dwarf Essex Rape, that's the cheap filler that is used and designed to suck more hunting dollars out of your wallet and they don't call it Dwarf for nothing. There's not a lot of volume there. It doesn't grow as high and it's not a great addition to a food plot blend. It can be a small part of it. None is even better. But bottom line is if you see a high percentage of it in your blend, definitely try another blend. So there's some great mixes. There's some great uses for brassica. I hope this helps clear the air on some of the myths of brassica, whether it's not being used or it's used too late. You really can speed that up, get them to hit it earlier. There's a lot of places, most places, I do not recommend adding beans and peas to the brassica because it forces the deer to actually consume it a lot faster and a lot earlier in the season. Again, late October is a great time for brassica. It's a wonderful, powerful, tiny little seed that can produce great tonnage for you this fall and it can feed the deer over a long period of time on your land. Deer will find it, they can hit it. And if you're in one of those 5% areas where they won't eat it, boy, don't bash it or tell people not to plant it. Always keep in mind that you're the rare exception and not the majority. Make sure you're not giving advice to other people. It could be even just five miles down the road. Their conditions could be completely different. Count yourself lucky if you can plant brassica and get into that late October timing because it's a wonderful tiny little seed that can really help you achieve your deer goals this fall.